Okay, hi everyone, my name is Miriam Gonzalez. I'm coming from Mexico, from the community over there. So let's get start. Okay, so I kind of separated the presentation in a couple uh, parts to show you how is everything in Mexico in the community and then what are we doing right now with the government and what we are willing to do in the future, so. Okay, so this is Mexico, as you can see here. And it looks pretty peaceful right there, right? Like a country, I mean, but we have to consider that we have almost uh, more than 10,000 kilometers of coastlines, and also we have around two million kilometers, four kilometers of desert, rainforest, uh, we have high mountains, we have also, uh, what else? I mean, we have anything. I mean, we have very much different ecosystems right there. So, looks very peaceful, but if you consider we have earthquakes. So this is the one picture right here from 1985, the earthquake of Mexico City in the one Several thousand people got killed. Actually, there is no exact number. So that was pretty, pretty bad. And then we have also hurricanes, like Hurricane Vilma that hit the coast of the Caribbean back in 2005. This is a picture of uh, Patricia. That was last October 2015. And even you cannot see actually that what is underneath. You cannot even see the country. So, okay, no to Mr. Trump right here. <laughs> Hurricane Consuela will not stop in any wall in the border. So just in case there was any question. OK. Uh, also, we have landslides. And this is actually a couple pictures from uh, last April, May, I think, in the one there was some heavy rains. And people is living, poor people is living in certain small mountains in the one uh, for cutting the trees or some other things. And the, lands, the land will come to, to the bottom and will kill people. And also, we have active volcanoes. I mean, so you have to add. So last but not least is the Popocatépetl volcano. So yes, that's the name. And the pronunciation is like this. So you want to repeat it in your home. So that's the way. And it's another way to say it right here, Popocatépetl. But also, you can call it Don Goyo. That's the easy nickname that we use it. This volcano is right about one hour and a half from Mexico City in the border of different states, uh, like uh, state of Mexico and Puebla. So it's pretty active and has been more active the last couple months. So, so what are we doing right now in the community in Mexico? We are not many people, but we are trying to be uh, really active. So we are trying to do every three, four months uh, events in universities or some other institutions that invite us to give conferences and also to, to give workshops. So in this event right here uh, is in the State of Mexico University, in the one we had two days of events, and in average, 80 people attend the, the events. So actually, the, the trainers are right, right here in the first row. And so people in Mexico still doesn't know the importance about open data. And of course, I mean, OpenStreetMap is not well known yet by all the communities and, and people in Mexico. So we have to start from the beginning. So the, the big question is, what is OpenStreetMap for them? And we try to answer that question. No? So uh, we try to explain what is open data, how is uh, the crowdsourced data also updated in the, in the maps. And also we try to speak about the benefits about OpenStreetMap. So one very important thing that I have found also in Mexico is that people is like so, so worried. I mean, why all these communities are making all these efforts? Why should we bother mapping? I mean, it's already there. It's already in, in Google Maps. So we have to also be really clear with them about what's the benefit about the open data and also why we should keep mapping in open sources. So we also present this comparison. I mean, I can share it with you if you want about what is a commercial map. I mean, we don't use any name to not blame any company, but I think people will understand what we are talking about here. So, and we compare versus uh, open street maps. So we have all these, all these lines. Why? Because one, has their own data and one is the, the open data, the API about the connectivity and it has a cost. So we mentioned all these kind of things and also one really important thing is that we mentioned that the maps, OpenStreetMap doesn't differentiate, or doesn't have any discrimination about where to map the opposite. I mean, we have hot, we have missing maps in the one, we are focused to map in the areas in the one, there are no maps in the other, other companies. So that's something that we also try to like really, really mention in the, in the workshops. So after this explanation we give to the people in the workshops, we say one is open data and one is data for visualization open, but it's actually closed data. So with this kind of uh, comparison and also examples, we are trying to make people more involved and 
that they understand what is happening. So I was mentioning about all these alliances with universities. So we are trying to make three, every three, four months uh, these events. And we are trying to do like kind of a brand. So Jornada de Mapeo Libre, it will mean like a day of open mapping. That's kind of the equivalence. And then we hashtag with uh, the name of the college. In this example is the UNAM, National University of Mexico. In the other one, in the left side of the screen, will be the State of Mexico University. So we're trying to give a, a identity of each of the events so people know that we are giving an event in certain place. So I have an example of what happened in uh, last May in the, in the UNAM. So this is the commercial maps um, screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, we see here what happened after the event. So if you compare the, the open street map with the commercial map, it's a lot of difference. And if you compare also the before and after the event, you see also the big difference about the event. So we had around 100 people in the event really involved about mapping other campus, and they were really happy with their results. So what has been happening in Mexico? The community is really small, and, it's, and we have a really big country. That's one of the issues. And also, uh, Mexico has like urban areas that are really concentrated in Mexico City, Monterrey, and Guadalajara. And the most active communities are Mexico City and Guadalajara, too, I will say that. So the rest of the country is kind of still under construction. They are like isolated mappers that they don't care about the community. They care just about mapping by themselves. So we're trying to gather the most people that we can. So last year, what we saw, uh, Miquel actually helped me with this map. So this right here in orange are editions made by new users. So it looks a lot, but there is one import project here. So there was an import that here are the team also that helped with the import project in Cluj, Romania. And we uh, imported all the boundaries of the state and municipalities. So that's why it looks a lot. Until December last year, the project was like here. But we can still see here like some other like activity from also mappers in the southern part of Mexico. So just an example of one city, here is Toluca. It's a city neighbor to Mexico City. Uh, it's the capital of the state of Mexico, actually. And also we can see here some activity, not related to the import project. And we can see here some uh, neighborhood additions, some streets that people was adding in this city. It's a city for, from about, I think, one million people. So what has been having, uh, happening uh, related to OSM, uh, to hot OSM? So. In September 2015, we have this simulation that it was organized by the government of Mexico and they invite us to participate. Uh, it was the 30th anniversary of the earthquakes of Mexico, so they wanted to like, show the people what we have advanced in uh, disaster management and also how we can be helping more and more. So certain uh, organizations participate, such as us, and that helped to uh, be aware about how to manage how to control and how to organize better a simulation or a real event. So when Patricia was coming to Mexico, we were thinking actually, I mean, you saw the picture, that we were be losing all the coast and all the villages around the coast, the Pacific coast of Mexico. The good thing is that by some natural reasons, uh, the hurricane shrink and we only had some heavy rains. That was what happened in Mexico. So, but the activation that took place helped to map all the Pacific coast of Mexico. So the states of Jalisco, you can see right there, and also the state of Colima, and I think also Nayarit was, you, you can see that the, the picture is in, in, in black, and then it turned uh, orange. So only in 48 hours, we saw that uh, more than 500 people helped to map all this area, and more than 1 million editions took place, more than 100,000 road editions took place also, and more than 80,000 buildings were added in the area. So it was an amazing job done by people in Mexico and also people from, from abroad. So with this uh, example, what happened after, the government of Mexico saw that we were really like sticking together for helping in case something happened. So in the internet day in May this year, the president of Mexico called 50 people, and I was also invited to this event, to speak about open data and also the future of open data in Mexico. So in this uh, event, actually the president of Mexico said thank you to HOT uh, op OpenStreetMap to what happened in Hurricane Patricia and also that they were willing to cooperate in the open mapping in the future uh, in Mexico. So that's a really good news. And we have been trying also to cooperate also more with them. 
And what is the next steps here? The next steps will be uh, also having the help from the government to identify risk areas in Mexico. So we saw already that coast and maybe some towns uh, who are in poverty around certain small mountains. So these kind of zones, they already have certain areas that they are detected that they, they have certain risks. So we are also collaborating today to see what will happen and how we can map it. So we are right now in discussions to see which area should we do like a pilot in the one we can replicate later according to the results and how we can learn also from this pilot project. Also some other thing they want to integrate in the project is Mexico has 70% uh, of the zip codes or 30% of the, of the area of the country doesn't have any, any zip codes. So how can people also receive papers or documents or, or anything? I mean, how can they also exist? I mean, if they don't have a zip code. So they want to integrate to the disaster management project also mapping the zip code. So it's something we are trying to figure out how can we, can we work together for getting that. So basically, uh, Mexico Digital is the strategy uh, office for the open data. They, they want to collaborate with us. CENAPRED is the National Prevention Disaster Management of Mexico and us. We are trying to put something together to get all these areas. This is an example of the southern part of Mexico in the one the state of Chiapas is there, uh, Oaxaca is there, Campeche is there, some other states who have really, really poor areas. And also they have indigenous groups, the ones maybe that don't speak Spanish, maybe don't, they don't have schools, maybe they don't have also uh, uh, roads to get to their places. So we can map certain areas within these states in the ones we know that they need help to be mapped. So something we also say in the presentations is that who is open street map is everybody. It's uh, citizens, academy, government, companies, everybody is open street map and we want to like, be, sh be showing everybody right there. So with this I want to say that open street map Mexico needs you, <laughs> it needs everyone. <laughs> Either in Mexico, either abroad, we need you. And uh, if you want to help in anything, you are more than welcome. We are a really open community. We are small, but we work really hard to make it bigger and bigger. So we are having also a website. We have also the social networks to be able to answer questions to people. And if you want to contact me, here is my, my contact right here. Either Gmail or by Twitter, I am right there. So thank you, everyone. Questions or? So, so the yeah. question, do you also have the problems that we have? I mean, how do you like maintaining the, uh, the community itself? Like what are the challenges and how do you overcome the challenges? Like growing the community and yeah. Yeah. So that they keep, keep on interested in our thing. Yeah, it, it's really hard because people get really busy with the daily jobs. People also uh, lose interest. So it's really hard. What we're trying to do right now is something similar as you do with the universities in the one we're trying to see who is the people who has been coming back, asking questions, and they have more interest uh, in keep participating. So we're trying to see who is somebody that can be committed to do further work even on weekends because some of these things are even on weekends and I think we had to take a couple people but it's really hard and it's really hard people comes really <coughs> excited to the workshops or to the conference and they map for for one month because so we kind of do contests in the with the help yeah. of certain companies the one we give t-shirts or caps or some other like things for the top three mappers <laughs> so to keep them mapping and not everybody after that month will keep mapping they will go for the award for the prize and then they will stop doing things so it's hard, but we're trying to find a way to keep, keep motivating the people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what is your company's participation? Do you have like a, a record or something like that? Uh, no, we are not uh, officially uh, a non-profit yet. So we are just uh, seven, eight people that are the most active for giving the conferences or the workshops. And we're trying to uh, formalize the, the structure. And I think that will be done be before the end of the year. So. Right now, it's kind of uh, voting. We vote, and then and also who has time will be able to do one event. If some other people say have time, some other people would take the place. So right now, it's about voting, and it's kind of democracy right now. So 
I think around November, we're going to be having the, the association already established, and then we will have the structure of president, secretary, treasurer, and all these kind of things uh, that will happen in, in a couple months. Right now, it will be us, and then we are planning also to get grants to keep moving the, the association, because right now we cannot get any grants yeah. because we are not established yet. Yeah. So that's also a challenge, but I think we are getting there because the people that right now is participating are the ones also who want to become a, a non-profit. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to map the wall? The, the wall? <laughs> 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 Curious. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you everybody.